Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things I've learned as I've grown up into this old man that you see before you today. Uh, every day I get on here and I tell very serious stories or, I don't know, kind of profound moments in my life. And I wanted to tell something a little bit different today. I wanted to do some advice giving based on um, something that I lived through in my life. It's not super serious, but I think that the message is really profound and has changed my perspective on the way that I view the world. So let me share this with you, okay? Uh, 10 years ago this week, I left uh, a treatment facility that I had worked at for 13 years. And it was a hard decision for me, you know? Like, first of all, I was very, very scared. I was like, I don't know that I can support myself. I had like, you know, saved a lot of money. I had other businesses that I had started along the way. And so, but I was very, very nervous about, you know, leaving. But I also thought that it was time. I had been there for a long time. It was no longer a fun environment for me to work in. Um, many of the people that I had started with had left and gone and done other things. I wasn't that close to my coworkers anymore. At times, it even felt kind of toxic. So it was time for me to go. And it was a decision that I, you know, talked to uh, my sponsor and my parents about. And, you know, my friends, I even talked to my supervisor about it. And she was like, yeah, I think it's time for you to go too. We both agreed that, you know, the next part of my life needed to start. And what was scary about that was at that time, I had no idea really what that was going to look like. You know, it had, I had been there since a year after I had gotten sober. And uh, that was all I knew since I had gotten sober. Look at Boo Radley. He's joining us for the video. That was all I I knew, you know, and it was very safe for me to go to the same place that I, you know, had gone to every day for 13 years. And I really thought at one point that I would retire from there. And looking back, I'm like, that's so funny, Peter, that you thought that, you know, and since I have been gone, even more people have left that I worked with and like it's totally circulate, recirculated into a new staff there and the, you know, the program is completely different than it was when I worked there and it's still a great program, um, but you know, it's just a completely different program than it was when I worked there and so for me to still be there today, I don't know where I would have fit in if that makes sense. So I think that my decision that I made at that time was actually a perfect decision for me. Um, I probably, in all honesty, should have left a year or two before that but I uh, you know was scared and I was saving money and I was intent on being able to semi-retire by the time that I was 40 45 that's always been my plan and um, you know I had to do something for finances, don't we all? <laughs> like, you know, to get a real job. But anyway, um, I've always loved working. I've never been, you know, had any kind of adversity to working. So um, anyway, that was not even the, sh the story that I was going to tell, but that was going to be the tail end of it. And what I was going to say through that is, you know, in life, I think that we have to take risks, you know, positive risks. And that doesn't mean that, you know, people all the time, they ask me, like, should I quit the, quit my job? I'm unhappy or I'm not happy at college. I'm in my first semester. Should I leave? I don't know what I'll do, whatever. And I always say, these are personal decisions. I'm not going to help you make that, you know? I get that those two questions a lot in my direct messages. But I do think that, number one, if you're going to leave your job, unless you have some, you know, other form of financial income coming in that you can pay your bills and support your family, don't leave the job that you're at. I mean, that's just, we don't want to do that, right? Like, that's not a smart move. And if you're at school, I always tell everybody to give it a year. And if you're at college and you're not leaving your dorm room and you haven't really participated and you're not going to, you know, if, if football or other sports or you're not really trying to get along with people or know people or, you know, you're not like doing like, I don't know, like uh, getting in study groups and things like that. You're just sitting in your dorm room saying, I miss home. You're never going to have the college experience. And uh, I really suggest to people that they get out for a year. Okay. And I'm not saying go to parties and get intoxicated and all that kind of stuff. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying go meet a tribe of people that are like yourself and see if that changes for you. I was just talking about this to a friend of mine today. My brother-in-law uh, went to a college here in Indiana and he is, I think he's 24 now. He just graduated two years ago. Yeah, he's 24. And uh, he's a skate. he was a skater in high school and he loved to skate. And when he got to the campus, he was miserable there. He did not like it, right? And he wasn't meeting anybody. And he's a super friendly kid. Like, he's like, you know, knows a lot of people. And he doesn't have a problem going up to strangers and stuff like that. But first, they couldn't sk skate on the campus. That was a huge issue for him. And then he just wasn't meeting anybody, right? And so he talked to me about it, you know, around, like, the holiday time. And I said, just give it some more time. He had talked to a couple different people. 
he was intent on transferring to a different college. And he said, you know, I said, just give it some time, whatever. And, you know, he's like, well, I'm really thinking about like trying to get into this fraternity and all this kind of stuff. And I said, I think that's, he is not the person that was like a fraternity person either, right? Like, I mean, I think, I don't know. I was raised by a Pi Phi and a Fiji. So they were really upset that I didn't go, can you imagine me in a fraternity? But anyway, you know, I said, just give it a try. If that's what, you, if that's something that you think might be fun, go do it. And, uh, he pledged Sigma Chi, and he was extremely happy, and he is like his fraternity, and his fraternity brothers mean everything to him today, and he's met some great friends, and if you could ask him, like, in retrospect, he would never have changed anything. He would have stayed there forever, you know? But he had to get out of himself a little bit, and he had to take some risks, and I think that that's important for all of us, you know? Go, like, look up a book club in your area, or ask a library for a book club if you're wanting to meet some new friends, or if you're thinking about changing careers and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, like, really put that out there in the universe and see, like, well, where might I want to change and what safe risks should I take? Because I don't think that everybody should make it right away. And, you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is like, people are like, you it's like completely changed your careers. Yes, I did. And, um, you know, when I got sober, it was my dream to help people in the way that I had. And by the time that I left that treatment program, I felt like I had completed my mission, if that makes sense. I feel, do you hear Boo Radley back there? He is completing his mission right now by digging a hole in the ground of the, the chair, apparently. Uh, but I felt like I had completed my mission that I had set out on. You know, I felt like I had done the work that I wanted to do. And I feel like I needed to let other people come up and have the same dream that I did. And so for me, it was like exciting because I also had, you know, people in my personal life. I've talked about this on my vlog, so y'all can go over there and check it out. I don't know which vlog it is. Somebody maybe can leave it in the comment section below. But I had somebody that was willing to help me a little bit and getting started and what I was going to do next. And I was very excited about that, you know. So for me, it took some of the fear away. And, um... I was actually going to share, this wasn't even the video that I was going to make when I sat down. This is so funny. The video that I was going to make was my resistance to a change that we had when I worked in the treatment program and how that ended up becoming like my favorite thing that I did there. I was so resistant to, I've talked about this on my vlog too. Um, I was so resistant to this change and it was the implementation of family groups. And um, I will never forget like, we had a very strict family program where I worked. And uh, so that I was, there was two counselors on the, um, the unit that I worked on. And I was Tuesday through Saturday, and the other counselor was uh, Sunday through Thursday. And so we would have family nights on Thursday nights, and we stayed, like, till 10.30 or 11 on Thursday nights. I miss those nights sometimes. It's crazy that I'm saying that to you. But so anyway, and that was the only family night that we had. That was the only family group that we had. We had group therapy with the families. Well, my supervisor decided that we needed to have more family work going on. And so what she did was, we would also do individual family sessions, but she implemented the fact that like on Saturdays, I would run family group just with my group and that for the families to be able to visit with the, the patient, they had to attend the family program first. And so it was like this incentive to get family members up there participating in the family program and being taught about drugs and alcohol and things like that and limit setting and boundary setting because a lot of families weren't coming. They were just coming for visitation. And then the other counselor would do it on Sunday. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. My Saturdays are my last day. I work my ass off. I work my ass off. I work my ass off all day, all week long. Saturdays are my relaxing day to get caught up on paperwork and all this kind of stuff. She goes, well, like it or not, she said, you are going to do this. And I'll never forget, we have this big team meeting about it. And afterwards, I was just like, <laughs> and afterwards, I, um, like my supervisor called me into her office and she said, listen for a second. She said, you have been here the longest. She said, they look up to you. She said, I need you to get on board with this family program. And I was like, I think you need to think about this first. I don't think this is, a, she goes, it's a good idea. She's like, almost every other treatment program does it. We're behind on the times. She's like, it will really strengthen our family program. And she said, I need you to get behind this because if you don't, they're all going to be bitching and moaning. I need you to support this, you specifically. And I was like, all right, I can do that. I can be the cheerleader. So anyway, you know, I did it begrudgingly. It ended up being the favorite thing that I did when I worked in treatment. Working with families, and what's so crazy about this is I still today get Facebook messages and phone calls from families that I used to work with, I mean, 20 years ago, and they'll call me up and they'll be like, hey, like, I'm looking for a referral. Do you know somebody in town? That I'll be like, yeah, this is who, you know, like, you should go talk to, and they're awesome, and they're great, and, you know, they, they keep in touch with me, and they'll be like, oh, so-and-so graduated from college or whatever, and 
I talked about this, on, I'm referring, referencing my vlog a lot today, but I talked about this on my vlog too, that like not too long ago, I ran into a mother of a past patient that I had way back in the day at Costco and we stood there and talked for like a half an hour and when I walked away, I started bawling. I was like, I miss you guys so much, <laughs> you know, because you get so close with those people and it was so awesome. And, um, you know, the other night when I was doing my vlog, it just kind of hit me that this is the week of the 10 year anniversary. This is going to be a big year on this channel for me because this is also the 10 year anniversary of my mother's death. But this is the 10 year anniversary, the 10 year, this is the week right now. Actually, oh my God, it was Thursday night. So Thursday night, 10 years ago, because it was after family group. That was my last night. Oh, don't get emotional. 10 years ago tonight was my last night working in treatment. And you know what? Like, it's been great. Like, I've ha I have a great life. I don't miss... <laughs> Please let me just get through a video without crying just once. Um, you know, I don't miss direct care. It's not where I'm supposed to be anymore, but to wake up every day and to go be part of something that's bigger than you and to, you know, be part of people's lives and part of their journey is amazing. And you know, this is going to sound corny, but on YouTube, I get to kind of do that. You know, like I read your comments and you guys leave me messages about being, you know, in surgery or a family member and all that kind of stuff. And I still feel like I'm part of somebody's family, you know, externally. And it's awesome. And I love it. And to be able to get some of those same gifts by doing a YouTube. <laughs> I can't believe I'm crying over this. Hey, I have a friend of mine that always says, if you can't cry over it, it didn't mean anything to begin with. Um... What a fantastic journey my life has been, you know, just an amazing, I've just had an amazing life. And one thing has just led to the next, has just led to the next. And I'm super excited for 2018 to see what the next 10 years of my life, you know, have to offer. So I love you guys and uh, always take risks, but take planned, educated risks. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.